All right, so our last topic for this trig unit, this is actually the last topic, is trigonometric identities. And like I was saying, you either love this or you hate this, but hopefully, even if you hate it, you everyone will try to understand it. So let's go over what actually a trig identity is, and then I will tell you my tricks to help you solve these. A trigonometric identity is an equation involving trigonometric ratios that hold true for all var va values of the variable. So you're basically thinking of it as an equation and you're trying to figure out if the left side equals the right side. That's, that's the concept behind this. When proving a trig identity, you're going to transform the right side of the identity into the left side or vice versa. And a couple of helpful hints, simplify the more complicated side first, rewrite all expressions in terms of sine and cosine, apply the Pythagorean identities where appropriate, and you can use any of your numeracy skills, like finding a common denominator, factoring, expanding, simplifying, distributive property to solve these questions. So really think of it in terms of like equations and algebra rather than trig. It's, it's both of them combined. Now, the part that you guys don't like is you do have to memorize all of these identities. You will not be given it to given them. So um, let's go through them. Reciprocal identities, we all know because we ace that reciprocal quiz. So cosecant theta is one over sine theta, secant theta is one over cos theta, cotangent theta is one over tan theta. Here are a couple of new ones. Tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta, and cotangent theta is equal to cos theta over sine theta. This is actually not so new because remember when we were doing quadrantal um, angles? Remember how I said your x is always cos theta, your y is always tan theta, and to find tan, we would go tan theta is equal to your y value over your x value, and it just so happened your y value was sine theta over cos theta. I know it probably didn't like make sense then, and it might not make sense now either, but they are connected. The fact that tan is equal to y over x um, is actually the same as being sine over cosine. Doesn't matter the reasoning behind it, you just have to memorize it. Um, one other thing I wanna tell you is you can square all of these and everything becomes squared. So for example, you can write tan theta as tan squared theta is equal to sine squared theta over cos squared theta. And the same is true for all the reciprocal identities as well. If I write cosine cosecant squared theta, it would be one over sine squared theta. Secant squared theta is equal to one over cos squared theta. And cotangent squared theta is equal to one over tan squared theta. So just remember, all of these are like the basic identities. You're welcome to square everything and it still holds true. Okay, and then the Pythagorean identities. Now there is a whole theorem behind this. Oh, I actually don't like how I wrote that. Can I just redo that real quick? Tan squared theta is equal to sine squared theta over, that's much better. So one of the identities that's so helpful is sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. Like I said, I'm not going to derive it or anything. I'm just going to ask you to remember it and memorize it. And from this identity, we can actually come up with a couple more. So if I were to rearrange this and let's say I were to solve for sine, what I would end up getting is something like sine squared theta is equal to one minus cos squared theta. So I just took this cos squared theta from here and I moved it to the other side and I changed the sign. And then you may or may not recognize this, but this is a difference of squares. It's kind of like saying one minus x squared, for example, which would give you one plus x and one minus x. So if you remember your factoring, um, this becomes a little bit easier, but sine squared theta, this can also be rewritten as one plus cos theta and one minus cos theta. Because remember a difference of squares, if you have something like one minus x squared, it's the same as one and a one plus and a plus, plus uh, x and an x plus and a minus. So that's why you, factoring is gonna be used quite a bit when we're doing these kind of identities. Do you have to memorize this? No, you really don't. As long as you memorize one version of it, then you can kind of derive all the rest. And I think that's probably the most, um, the, the most efficient thing to do. If you spend too much time memorizing, then you're just gonna use all your brain space. <laughs> um, okay, we can also rearrange this to solve for cos theta. So cos squared theta is equal to one minus sine squared theta. So all I did was I moved the sine squared to the other side. 
And just like before, this is a difference of squares. So I can factor it. I'm going to get co squared theta is equal to one plus sine theta and one minus sine theta. Okay, and then a couple of other variations of this are tan squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta. One plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. Now, yeah, of course. Now, luckily, we do have a chart with us today. So we're just gonna keep referring to it when we're doing the questions. For question number one, we're actually not gonna be proving anything. We're just going to be simplifying it. So we're gonna practice simplifying these questions. Um, so it's not gonna be like the left side is equal to right side proof or anything like that. We're just practicing, trying to get it into a simpler form. And I'm gonna tell you that a simple form means you wanna to try to get it so it only has sine and cosine in it. If it has something like tan and secant, it's not simplified. Okay, so let's go ahead and start question number one. Um, square root one minus sine squared theta. So if you take a look at the big chart that we just did, what do you think we can replace one minus sine squared theta with? Specifically, just take a look at this part over here. Um, I know one minus sine squared theta is the same as co squared theta. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this with cos squared theta. And then whenever you have a square root and a square, both of those disappear. So we're just going to be left with cos theta. How do I know this is simplified? Well, it only has either a sine and a cos and we've kind of gotten rid of like the, the square root sign and stuff. So it looks pretty simplified. Question letter B, tan squared theta, we can replace with sine squared theta over cos squared theta. So I'm going to start with that. And secant squared theta, I can replace with one over cos squared theta. Where am I getting those from? It's directly from the chart. So like tan is here and secant is here. So I'm literally just writing them down. And I told you that everything can be squared. Okay, now this is an example of a fraction. And whenever you're dealing with fractions, the rules of fractions apply. If you're adding and subtracting fractions, you wanna make sure you have a common denominator, in which case, in this case we do. And if you have a common denominator, you just have to add or subtract the numerators. So I'm gonna rewrite this and it's gonna be sine squared theta minus one all over cos squared theta. Now this looks pretty simplified. We got rid of the tan and the secant, but we can actually go a little bit further. Um, I can replace the sine squared theta minus one. If I take a look up here, I have something that kind of looks like it, right? So just, I'll go back to the bottom over here. At the top, we discovered that cos squared theta is equal to one minus sine squared theta. But that doesn't really match what we have here. Here we have positive sine squared theta minus one. And the identity we have over here is positive one minus sine squared theta. So what can we do to make both of these match? Yeah, we can multiply both of them by negative one. So if I multiply everything here by negative one, I'm gonna get negative cos squared theta is equal to negative one plus sine squared theta which actually now is the exact same as what we have in the numerator, positive sine squared theta minus one. So I'm gonna replace sine squared theta minus one with negative cos squared theta over cos squared theta. And what do I get as a final answer? just a minus one because co squared theta and co squared theta your fraction rules when you have the same thing in the numerator and denominator it just crosses it out you're left with minus one question letter c all right so for question c we have sine to the power of four theta plus sine squared theta co squared theta and if you look at this, you're gonna notice that everything is already in sine and cos. So it's already simplified. We don't really need to rearrange or, or replace it with anything. 
For a question like this, I am going to tell you to think about factoring again. And I guess one of the reasons why we don't, or students don't really like this concept is because you have to remember how to factor. Okay, so don't write this down, just follow along with me for a second. Let's say I said all the sines were x's and all the cosines were y. This would be x to the power of four plus x squared y squared. Can you see a greatest common factor in this question? X squared, right? So you would take out x squared, you'd be left with x squared plus y squared, and that would be your answer. So in the same way, we're gonna do the exact same thing, but this time it's with sine and cos. And if it helps, you can always substitute sine and cos with the letters x and y or a and b to make the question easier. So I recognize that we, the, both of these terms have a sine squared theta. So we're gonna factor out a sine squared theta and we're gonna be left with sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. You're gonna flip back to your other page and you're gonna recognize that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is a Pythagorean identity, which is equal to just one. So our final answer is gonna be just sine squared theta. And usually the questions we give you do simplify and are like dissatisfying. So you will end up with something pretty good. Okay, question D is gonna be a long one because for question D, what we're gonna do is, we basically have to find a common denominator. And in order for us to find a common denominator, we have to multiply both of these fractions by a common multiple. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this fraction by one minus sine theta at the top and the bottom. And I'm gonna multiply this fraction by one plus sine theta at the top and the bottom. It's gonna be long and it's going to be, like there's a lot of room for error, but let's try it. So it's gonna be cos theta times one minus sine theta. And this is gonna be one plus sine theta times one minus sine theta plus. This is gonna be cos theta times one plus sine theta all over one minus sine theta times one plus sine theta. Now that we have a common denominator, we are going to just fix up the numerator, distribute and gather like terms. So what I'm gonna get here is cos theta times one is just cos theta. Cos theta times negative sine theta is negative sine theta cos theta. And I'll pause here so you can see if it makes sense. So I distributed those. Now I'm gonna distribute what I have over here. So cos theta times one is again, plus cos theta. And cos theta times sine theta is plus sine theta cos theta. Doesn't matter which one you put first, no, but just be, um, just be, consistent because then you can see things like cross out and stuff like that. And then at the bottom, I am going to, I can put them together or what I can do is I can actually foil it. When I foil it, I'm gonna get one times one, which is one, then negative sine theta plus sine theta, which will just be a zero. And this will just be sine squared theta. So when you foil this, you will end up with just this. Is there a faster way to do this? Probably not. Keep in mind, we're spending two days on this. So two days of like practice. So hopefully it'll get better. What can we do to simplify the numerator? Well, look, negative sine cos theta and positive sine cos theta are just gonna cancel out and become a zero. And then cos theta plus cos theta is going to become two cos theta. Um, take a look at the identities we had before. Can I replace one minus sine squared theta with anything? Cos squared theta. Now of one cos theta at the top, two cos thetas at the bottom, you can cross one of them out and you're gonna be left with just two over cos theta as your final answer. Longer. Oh. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the adorable like 
dragon it's like a vampire dracula with so cute question number two you guys is a little bit different because now it says prove and as soon as you see prove you know you have to do a left side right side check so proving questions means you figure out if the left side equals the right side and the most important thing i can tell you about this is you're not allowed to move anything over from the right side to the left side or vice versa Step. The question I give you is the question I give you. Do not move anything around. You can only manipulate the left side independently, manipulate the right side independently, and try to see if they equal one another. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this with um, the first question, which is I'm going to start with the left side. You always want to begin with the more complicated side. One of the sides is always going to be much easier. So the left side is tan squared theta plus one. Okay, so I know tan squared theta is sine squared theta over cos squared theta. And you can't really do anything with the one, but I know that if I have like two numbers, then I want them to have a common denominator. So I'm going to change the one to be cos squared theta over cos squared theta. And the only reason I'm doing that is so that it kind of matches the first fraction. Everyone see what I did here? Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, because I have a common denominator, I'm just going to move this over. Oh, I can't move it over anymore. Because I have a common denominator, I'm going to add the numerator. So it's going to be sine squared theta plus cos squared theta all over just cos squared theta. Pythagorean identity tells me that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. And so for the left side, I end up getting one over cos squared theta. Now let's go over to the right side. And on the right side, the only thing I have is secant squared theta. We know secant squared theta is one over cos squared theta. So we, that's, that's it. We've proven that left side equals right side. And we're going to finish off the question by saying, therefore, left side equals right side. How many marks do you A question like this would be maybe three marks. No, because the right side doesn't deserve that much. The left side would be two marks. The right side would be maybe one mark. This question might even be out of two marks, actually. It's not that intense. All right, let's go ahead and try question letter B. For question B, honestly, is there a complicated side? They both seem pretty complicated to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with the left side. I have one minus cos squared theta. Do we have an identity that you can replace one minus cos squared theta with? Yeah, so this is gonna be sine squared theta and this is as simplified as possible. So we're just gonna leave that there. We go on to the right side, which is sine theta times cos theta times tan theta. The only thing I can really do here is I can replace the tan theta with sine theta over cos theta. And then from here, can you recognize that the two cos thetas will just cancel out? Right, because there are ones in the numerator, ones in the denominator. So this and this will cross out. So we will be left with just sine squared theta. Then we're going to write, therefore, the left side equals right side. So remember, again, you're not allowed to move anything from the right side to the left side or vice versa. We're going to keep everything where it is. This question is a little complicated because, look, there's no tan or anything like that. So how exactly are we going to solve this question? We're going to have to do a little bit of magic. Um, okay, here, here's, before we start, let's think about this. 
Remember when we said sine squared, we're not solving it yet. We're just remembering sine squared theta is one minus cos squared theta. Remember one of the properties that we're gonna memorize? And then we actually broke this down and we said sine squared theta is equal to one plus cos theta and one minus cos theta. So what I see here is I see a one plus cos theta. And in order for us to replace that, we're going to have to replace it with this. And in order to isolate for that, we have to move one minus cos theta to the other side. Okay, so it's a lot of manipulating, but what I'm gonna do is I am going to rearrange this. So it's going to be one plus cos theta is equal to sine squared theta over one minus cos theta. So this is just like the pre-work before we can even start the question. And the reason why I have to do this is because if you look at the question, there's nothing you can replace sine theta with. There's nothing you can replace just cos theta with. So now you have to go deeper into like the Pythagorean identities and find something that you can replace one plus cos theta with. I'll tell you my reasoning again. I know sine squared theta is equal to this. I know when you factor it, you get this. And we wrote those down over here, right? So I'm just, I'm literally just looking at this over here. Then what I did was in order for me to isolate just this, I took this and I divided it over here. So it's gonna, one plus cos theta is sine squared theta divided by one minus cos theta. Okay. What's the point of all of this? Now let's actually start to solve the question. So the question is, guys, my hands are sweaty, so it's like messing with the, okay. So my left side is going to be sine theta over what we just solved for over here, which is sine squared theta over one minus cos theta. So this is all together. To simplify this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the reciprocal, right? A fraction divided by a fraction. So it's gonna be sine theta times one minus cos theta all over sine squared theta. And then from here, I recognize that I can cross out a sine theta and one of the sine thetas in my square. So all I'll be left with is one minus cos theta over sine theta. And then you take a look at the right side and you get the answer. You don't have to actually change the right side at all because the right side of the equation already is one minus cos theta over sine theta. Therefore, left side equals right side. Okay, I'll pause here so you can take, I'm just gonna keep going. All right, question D, we have the left side, which is equal to sine squared theta minus cos squared theta. Now don't make the mistake of replacing this with a one. This does not have an addition sign. It's not a Pythagorean identity. What we can do though, is we can either replace sine squared theta or cos squared theta with one of the things that we have from before. It doesn't matter which one you replace, you'll get the same answer regardless. So I am going to go ahead and replace cos squared theta with one minus sine squared theta. I'm gonna distribute the negative sign. So it's gonna be sine squared theta minus one plus sine squared theta. I'm gonna add the sine squared theta and the other sine squared theta to give me two sine squared theta minus one. I'm gonna look at the right side and we don't have to do anything to that because it is already given us the answer. So our right side is just gonna be two sine squared theta minus one. We're gonna write therefore left side equals right side. That one wasn't too bad compared to question C. I'm gonna let you start off question E by yourself. And the reason why is look at the right side of question E. 
it is already simplified, sine x. So really, you're going to try and manipulate question E to give you sine x. Go ahead and try it. I'll give you two minutes while I do attendance, and then we'll take it up. I'll give you guys another minute. I'll get started, and then maybe we can meet and... Feeling a little lazy, so I'm just going to show this in one step. Hey. All right, you guys. So I did. We're on our last question. See you next period. Okay. Do you have something to ask me? Okay. You guys, um, here's how I started to the last question. I feel like there were multiple different ways where you could have done them, but here's what I did. So I replaced the tan X with sine X over cos X, and I replaced the secant X with one over cos X. Then within each fraction, like numerator and denominator, you had to find a common um, denominator. So it's sort of like thinking of sine X to be over one and this to be over one. I multiplied everything at the top with cos x. So I got sine x cos x plus sine x all over cos x. And then I just didn't have enough room. So I moved the denominator and I just wrote, wrote divided by in brackets cos x plus one over cos x. I took the reciprocal and I also factored this. I recognized that there's sine, a sine x in both of the terms. So I took it out and I was left with cos x plus one. And then in the end, everything crossed out. The two cos x is crossed out and the cos x plus one. And I was left with just sine x. Eli? You could and just have one over one plus uh, cos x. And then you would get just one over secant x and then cross it out that way. Yeah, that was probably a lot faster. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually 